Thus far, we have provided values for all of our variables. So we've hard-coded those values. So here I have a variable called username. I've set it equals to John. And then I print welcome to campus, comma, and then the name of the user. So my output is welcome to campus John. But in most cases, we want the user to provide input that goes into these variables. Remember, our, sh our simplest program is input, process, output. So unless our user is always John, this is not a good approach. So we're going to change this to get input from the user for that username. I'm just going to come out, come in out that line. I'm going to rewrite it as username equals, and we can use the input method. And since it's a method, it's going to take parentheses, and inside those parentheses, we can put a prompt. So I'm just going to say, please enter your first name. And I like to do a colon and a space, so provide a little space between the prompt and the user's input, end my string, and end the parentheses for the input method. I'm going to save this and run it. And now we're getting a, a printout here, a prompt of please enter your first name. And if I enter my first name and press the enter key, so it pauses at this statement until the user enters the input and presses the enter key. And I'm getting welcome to campus, Stephen. So that's how we get input from the user using a prompt and having the program pause while the user enters that information. Sometimes we want to get numeric data. And the input that's provided is a string value. So username was string. But if I create x as a variable, and I want x to be an, uh, maybe an integer, I can use input. Please enter the first integer. And that's what they enter is going to be a string, but I want to convert that to an integer before I place it into x. Now remember, we have that int casting method, and I can put my input statement inside of the int cast. So now that string that they enter is going to be modified and, and changed into an integer, then assigned to x. I want to get another number. I'm just going to copy this, and we'll call this one y. And we'll say, please enter the second integer. So I want that to be y. And then we'll say z equals x times y. And then I want to print the value of z. In fact, let's go ahead and use that name that we created earlier. I'm going to print username plus, we'll do a comma, the product is, and we're going to concatenate here the string value of z. I'm going to save and run. So once again, I put in my first name. I'm welcome to campus. This is please enter the first integer. Let's put in five. And the second integer uh, will be nine. And I'm getting an error. And notice it says here, name username is not defined. Well, wait a minute. I defined username up here, but here I did a different spelling of it as far as case sensitivity. This needs to be a capital N. So that's a common mistake you might see made or that you might make. Once again, I'm going to save and run. So we'll try this again. Oh, So I'll put in Stephen. We'll do the same numbers, 5, 9. And I'm told, Stephen, the product is 45. And I forgot my T here in the. One other thing I want to do before I run this again is I like to have a little spacing between welcome to campus and enter the next numbers. So as you recall, we can do that by concatenating a new line character. Now I could put the new line character in front of my input here. That would work as well. So again, I'm going to run the module. 
I'll put in Bill this time as the first name. Please enter the first integer. Let's do 12 and um, 8. And I'm told the product is 96. I can do the same thing casting a input value to a float or to a Boolean. Now in next week's lessons, we're going to look at using conditional statements, basically the if structure. And sometimes we might want to convert a value based on a string that's inputted. For example, I'm going to create a variable called isNew, and I'm going to get an input statement of saying, are you new to campus? I'm going to prompt them to enter either a Y or an N. And so it's going to be a string value they put in. And I want to set is new to basically being true or false. And we use an if structure for that. If is new equals Y. We're going to talk about this if structure next in a very near future video. So I'm not going to explain all this, but basically I'm asking the question, is is new equal to y? And there's a double equals there. And if it is, then I'm going to set is new equal to true. Now it's kind of unique in Python that we can recast a variable uh, to a different data type. And here I don't want to have it, get this in strings because this is going to be a Boolean data type. What we might do is just do something like is new bool. So we'll create a new variable. Um, most languages do not let you change data types of variables. Python's kind of unique there. So it might be a good habit to get into to create a new variable uh, for when you move on to a different language. And I'm going to say else, need a colon, and we'll say is new bool equals false. Now I might want to do something with that uh, Boolean value. All I'm simply going to do here is print it. I'm going to go ahead and just comment out all of this. And let's save and run. So are you new to campus? Yes, no. So if I type in a yes, the value of is new bool is true. I'm going to run this again. And this time I type a no or an n and I'm told false. Now if I type anything other than a y, it's going to give me a false. So if I run this one more time and I type yes, I get a false. It's only looking for a uppercase Y. And we'll look at how to convert that between uppercase and lowercase, how to only take the first character of an input string down the road. That's all possible. So we're just keeping it simple right now. They have to enter either a Y or an N or anything other than Y, and they'll get a false. Just a little preview of what's to come. All right, again, I'm going to comment this out. And let's create a little problem here. We're going to create an application that accepts the number of miles from a user and the number of gallons it took to fill a tank and display the miles per gallon they got. So what do we need for input? Well, for input, we need the number of miles. We need the number of gallons. For process, we need to calculate the miles per gallon, which is going to be the number of miles divided by the gallons. And then for output, we want to display the MPG. So I'm going to have a variable called miles. And we're going to set miles as an integer. So I want to get it inputted from the user. Our prompt will be enter the number of miles driven. And you need two parentheses, one for the input, one for the int. For gallons, we'll set this equal to a float. And our prompt here will be enter the number of gallons. MPG then is going to equal, so now we're doing our process of 
miles divided by gallons. And then I want to print your MPG was, and we use that placeholder and do a zero. I want to do this to one decimal place. So 0 0.1F. And we're going to format MPG. So very simple application, just four lines of code, getting input, processing, and output. Let's try this. I'm going to save and run. So enter the number of miles driven. Let's say we drove 300 miles. We'll do something fairly simple here. So in 300 miles, I used uh, 10 gallons of gas. And so I'm told that my MPG was 30.0. I'm going to run this again. This time we'll use an actual floating point. We'll say we drove 250 miles and we used 11.65 um, gallons. And our MPG was 21.5. Now we can test that. Let's just do um, print 250 divided by 11.65 and see what that number is. It's 21.459, so it does round up to 21.5. So that's how we get input from the user. We process it and provide output. We'll be using input a lot as we move forward.